this video we're going to do a t-test for the population slope and also a confidence interval for the population slope. Okay, so we're using this direct mail data. An antique dealer recently opened a shop and the shop is open to the public Tuesdays through Sundays. Direct mail, which is the unsolicited flyers and informational brochures you get through the mail, um, is the primary advertising app is the primary advertising outlet. Direct mailings are sent out every Wednesday, and we're gonna use regression to determine if sales are related to the direct mail campaign. So the first thing that we would probably try is just to look at the relationship between direct mail and sales. Um, so I'm gonna follow the instructions for um, simple linear regression. These are on your reference sheet if you need them. Um, analyze fit y by x. Sales is the outcome that I care about. I'm gonna use the version in dollars. Um, direct mail is the X, and then I'm going to choose um, fit line. So I don't really see much of a relationship here, right? This looks like a pretty weak relationship. Only 6% of the variability has been explained, um, but there's actually a problem with this. If we look back at our scenario, notice that the direct mailings are sent out every Wednesday. So by the time they actually arrive, it's gonna to be too late to um, really influence the sales that week. If anything, it would probably have an impact the following week. So let's try taking that into account in jump. So instead of using the um, direct mail column as it is, I'm gonna use a lagged version of that variable. So basically the idea is that I think that this week's direct mail is gonna impact next week's sales. So I want that direct mail number for week one to be lined up with the sales number for week two. Okay, so that's what we mean when we have a lagged variable. So I'm gonna do this again, analyze fit y by x. Sales is still my response, but this time I'm gonna put direct mail lagged as my explanatory. And I can see I've got a stronger association now. So now it's explaining about 42% of the variability. Um, this is the model that I'm gonna work with. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this output. Um, the question says, is there a statistically significant relationship between weekly direct mail cost, uh, we're using the lagged version, and weekly sales revenue? So if we are talking about um, a statistically significant relationship, we're gonna write the null and alternative in terms of the slope. So the null is that the slope of the population is equal to zero, and the alternative is that the slope in the population is not equal to zero. And because we're doing everything with the slope, we're gonna look at the slope row in the output. In fact, if you wanna mark out this other stuff for the intercept, um, we're not gonna be using that. Okay, so we've got our slope. Let me show you how to calculate the T ratio or the T statistic. So this has the same basic form um, as other test statistics that we've learned. And this is actually on your reference sheet. So a T statistic is equal to a regular statistic. So here we're gonna use the slope minus the null hypothesis value, in this case that's zero, and divide it by the standard error. So the standard error of the slope, that's something else that's given in the table. So if we do our slope, 52.8153 minus zero, obviously that doesn't make a difference. Divide by the standard error, 15.5738, um, then we're going to get our T statistic, which is this 3.39. And if we want to see where that P value comes from, we can use our T distribution. So this is a T distribution. Um, the degrees of freedom is going to be N minus 2. And the sample size, I didn't write it down here, but if you count the dots, the sample size is 18. Um, so in this case, the N minus 2 would be 16 degrees of freedom. And we're gonna find our T statistic, find 3.39 on the graph. And we're gonna shade everything beyond that. And then same on the other side, shade everything beyond. So we can actually try that in the distribution calculator. So I'm going to add-ins, teaching modules, distribution calculator. And I need a T distribution. This is a quantitative response, so I'm picking T. My degrees of freedom was N minus two, that was 16. I'm gonna put in my T statistic, 3.39. And I want this to be a two-sided test, so I'm choosing the option down here at the bottom. 
I've got value one and value two. Value one should be the negative one. Okay, and that's where I get my p-value, 0 0.0037. So where it says probability equals, that's the p-value. Okay, so my p-value is 0 0.0037. Okay, so this is a small p-value. So just like you saw on test two, when your p-value is small, um, that means that you have strong evidence. So we would always say strong evidence to conclude whatever our alternative hypothesis is. So in this case, that would be strong evidence to conclude that there is a relationship, right? Remember, if the slope is not equal to zero, that means that there is a relationship between direct mail costs and weekly sales. There is a relationship, hmm, wrong kind of mail. There is a relationship between direct mail costs and weekly sales. So far, all we have from the p-value is that we have strong evidence of a relationship. This doesn't necessarily tell us that direct mail makes a big difference, um, just that we have strong evidence that there is a relationship. So if we want to figure out how strong the relationship is, um, how much did the sales change, um, that's where a confidence interval could be helpful. So let's start off just by interpreting the slope. So the slope is the number here with direct mail, 52 point, I'm gonna say 82 since it's in dollars. So we would say as the amount spent on direct mail increases by one, right, as the amount spent on direct mail increases by one unit, and in this case, everything's being measured in dollars. So as it increases by $1, the weekly sales increased by this amount, $52.82 on average. So you can say on average, or you can say um, predicted to increase, but something to show that there's variability in that. Okay, so that's the sample slope, right? But we don't expect our population slope to be exactly equal to that. So for calculating the confidence interval for the slope, we're gonna use this basic formula um, that you've seen before for confidence intervals. So we're gonna start with our sample slope, plus or minus our critical value. Again, this is quantitative, so we're using T star, um, and then multiplying it by the standard error of the slope. Okay, so let's plug into this formula. So we've got our sample slope, 52.82, and then to get the critical value, we're gonna need to use jump, we're gonna use that distribution calculator again. Okay, I'm going back to the distribution calculator, still with 16 degrees of freedom, um, but I'm gonna change it and say input probability. I'm gonna pick central probability, and because we're looking for 95% confidence, I'm gonna put in 0.95 here. And then this number that comes out, the values that come out, that's the critical value. So 2.1199 is my critical value. Okay, so plus or minus 2.1199. Um, and then multiply the standard error. Again, we're getting this from the output, 15.5738. And when we put that together, um, it's between 19.80 all the way up to 85.83. Um, so this is a pretty wide interval if we think about um, how much payoff we're getting on this direct mail campaign. Um, and that kind of makes sense because we only have 18 data points. So it's hard to be really precise when we have a fairly small interval. Um, but, but to interpret this, we're gonna do something very similar to what we've done with previous confidence intervals. We're 95% confident that, and then we wanna talk about the parameter. So the parameter here is the population slope. We're 95% confident that the population slope is in this interval. All right, and one more thing before we move on. Um, is it safe to make cause and effect conclusions based on this data? Um, so I would say no, and that's based on the study design, not the p-value, right? The reason we say no here um, is because this is an observational study, not an experiment. So when you have observational studies instead of experiments, um, then it's possible that we can have confounders here. 
So maybe at the same time that they were increasing their spending on direct mail, they were also doing other things that boosted their sales, right? There could be other things that are actually causing the improved sales here. So remember, just calculating a p-value or a confidence interval, that's not going to determine your scope of inference, right? How far you can actually extend your conclusions is also dependent on the study design.